Okay, so today I'm going to talk about um, what I do to prepare my trail running shoes for the type of use and abuse I, I give them. My go-to trail runner, my all-time favorite, my greatest of all time is this shoe, La Sportiva uh, Mutant. And I've used this shoe for basically all my big adventures, uh, be it like my Centennial Project or my Sangres Traverse. Um, for my Mosquito 10 Mile Traverse, I use this similar shoe called the Urango. Um, it's just like this, except it has a um, built-in gaiter. Um, rubber's a little different, but same uh, outsole pattern. And it's the outsole pattern that I really, really like. It's just big and chunky and kind of gives uh, a lot of my uh, mountain bike tires a run for their money. Um, so when I'm kind of looking for shoes uh, in the Sportiva line, I look for this outsole. Um, other than the Urango, the Sea Light 2s, if you remember, had it. The Lycan 2 have them too. The other thing I like about these shoes is the the upper is this really nice soft mesh. And it's got this asymmetrical um, lacing that really kind of like, just kind of like folds, folds um, the tongue into the rest of the shoe. So it kind of like just gives your, you know, foot a little cuddle. And it works really well for me and the shape works for me too. I have a, a relatively wide foot. I think I like a D. That's for a width. So this shoe just works really well for me. Here's some tips to make sure that your mutant lasts as long as it can, doesn't die a premature death. So the first thing we're gonna look at is that upper. Um, the materials are very nice, light. It drains really quickly, drains slash dries really quickly, but it is a little bit more delicate than I would like, especially kind of in this area right here where the little toe is. More often than not, when I'm tromping through like talus and stuff, I will, like eat this part up and I'll show you what happens. So here's a worked uh, Las Sportas Chiva shoe. This is actually the shoe I use for the Sangres Traverse, which is 120 miles all off trail. More talus than I, I would ever dream about. Um, really awesome route, but if you see right here, the shoe does just get really messed up. Right where that toe is. It looks like I've been skateboarding in it which might have been, you know, the minority of the usage of the shoe, but it's mostly just uh, that talus kind of like shredding the shoe. So what I do is I take my shoe and I get a product called Seam Grip, which is just this guy right here. This is C Seam Grip plus WP, whatever that is. Yeah, there you go. So that's the stuff I like to use. When compared to something like Shugu, um, Shugu is gonna be a lot more viscous. And this stuff is, um, seems like a little lighter so it will kind of absorb into the fabric rather than laying on top of it. And for this usage is what I want. I want like the mesh material of the upper here and this stuff to kind of like meld together as one unit rather than like a, a shoe goo and my whole like little uh, kit right here for repairing shoes. This stuff is good for um, building up um, a layer of material, say you're fixing like the outsole, you have a big chunk that's been eaten out. That's when I would like kind of uh, grab this guy. And I kind of like look at areas I think need some use. This area right here, um, that's where I want to kind of hit it first off. So just do a really nice layer, nice light layer, and just get that like Ollie, Ollie patch going. So my Ollie patch is nice and uh, gooped up. And I'll do the other side too, kind of where um, the ball of my foot kind of rests or kind of between the ball of my foot and uh, my big toe. So right on the other side, eh, right here, I'll hit that area too. And this is usually caused, like the damage this is usually causes from like going off trail. So if like you're running a lot of on trail stuff, this is less of an issue, I guess. But for me, I'm always off trail. I'm like going through endless talus fields or um, just finding the sharpest rocks to like hit hit my feet against it's like it's like a gift so cool so i have this area and this area um well covered and then i'll actually go around this entire liner where this toe cap is and uh, hit that as well so and this helps i hope to keep that toe cap on because what kind of happens is uh you hit a rock with your foot and that toe cap gets sheared off of uh, the rest of the upper. And then you have like this big gap between um, your toe cap and the rest of the upper. And it, it just doesn't look great. And all you can do after that is actually fill it in within something like Shugo. So if I can avoid that for a couple more weeks, it just means a couple more weeks of like a better looking shoe. 
and maybe a shoe that works a little better too. So let's check out my work. So I got that, that, and all the way around the toe cap. And now if I really wanna be thorough, I can actually just outline the entire toe cap. So this area where the outsole and midsole meets the toe cap, sometimes that gets kind of uh, chunked up, so let's do it. Well there, well there, and then like the liner. So there's like, the outsole actually goes up and wraps almost to the to the um, the front of the shoe, and sometimes that gets kind of uh, separated from the shoe, and it like just looks kind of not so good. So let's get that going because I want to toe off, you know, and not feel something flapping. Good, I feel good about this. Um, this takes a good day to to dry, so maybe before you do this, have another B pair for running in for the next day. Before you do this, of course, um, wash the shoe itself with um, water and then um, scrub it with uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and then just let it dry. Um, the seam grip will work better on a clean surface rather than a dirty one. So that's it. I'll do the next, I'll do the other shoe later, kind of like in a cooking show. So the next thing um, I usually do is um, I replace the, the shoelaces um, right away. Unfortunately, the shoelaces that come with the, the Mutant just can't handle these guns. I, I don't know why. I usually just like, you know, like tighten the, sh the the heck out of them or something. I have no idea. But um, I hate having a run uh, ruined by a broken shoelace. So I just go to the grocery store when I get my microwave pizzas and my ice cream and I go buy an extra pair of shoelaces. And usually any sort of like tube style to shoelace that's three millimeters in diameter or less work great. These are just from like, you know, my local supermarket. So one thing about the Mutant is uh, the lacing is actually kind of complex. It's not symmetrical. So there's one side that uh, instead of just doing a crisscross pattern, it'll kind of like go up and then down through, around to the tongue, get like a loop that's in the middle of the tongue, go back through the shoe and do all these crazy things. So if you do um, relace them, like I actually sometimes like take a picture of how they were laced so I can use that as a guide or I'll like throw up right here um, my cheat sheet on how to lace the Mutant. So when you do lace it, you know how to do it the way it was from the factory. The outsole on the Mutants, like one of my favorite parts of the Mutants, nice and chunky. Sometimes I want a rock plate and um, i am been very much disappointed with shoes that come with their own rock plate. What I find it happens is they create the shoe by sandwiching the rock plate between the midsole and the outsole. And the adhesion of the outsole to the rock plate is not as good as just from the midsole. The outsole will just kind of like peel off in sections and I'm left with then no sole. Wow, that's that sounds terrible. <laughs> yep, I have no sole left. So what I like to do is I just like to create my own rock plate. So here are two rock plates that I've created and these are just using like a juice jar. And what I did was I took the insole of my shoe and use this as a, a pattern to create my own rock sole inserts. Take a take an old protein uh, carton jug thing, uh, cut it and cut so this part is flat. Take your insole, trace it around and cut it out. And once you're done, it should s fit snugly into your shoe. So for example, I think I have another one in here right now. Ta-da, looks like this. So what's cool about this is you can use it when you want to and you don't, you can take it out. I find it useful, say you're doing like a four day backpack and on three days the pups are dogging it. Put a little insole helper in there and you're good to go. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna kind of cover, I guess, is uh, additional traction for um, snow and ice. And uh, the best thing to do is actually get a specific um, pair of winter trail runners, the ones that have like built-in carbide spikes in them. And if you're looking for a pair, I really love the Sportiva Blizzards. First off, the, the outsole is even chunkier than Mutant, which I didn't think was possible, but it is. And then uh, they have the built-in carbide, so you don't need something like a pair of like uh, micro spikes. Like you can get away with a lot with just those carbide tips. There's about maybe nine of them in the in the sole. But if it's the sole, shoulder season like it is now, and that seems to be um, too much, you can use, you know, you can take a pair of mutants and then make them into screw shoes. So to do that, go to a local hardware store. Uh, mine is McGuckin, and uh, get yourself some sheet metal screws basically. And these will work perfect. These are 3 eighths in length and they've got a hex head. And I'll throw up on the screen exactly the ones I use. And 
what you'll need for these is a, the driver, the hex driver. Um, I know they have like a, a straight slot slot on them, but it'll be um, hell to try to get these in. So my suggestion is use a power drill and a driver. Um, I have lost my driver to my power drill, but I have found out that I can use one of these, which is just a it's just a cheap uh, ratcheting screwdriver. But um, without like a drill bit or driver, the hex head just fits perfectly into where you would put the driver. So I can just uh, drive the screw in with nothing. Take your screw head and then like get your sh outsole of your shoe and then pick where you want to put the screw in. Your main worry is you do not want the screw to go all the way into the midsole into your foot. Safer areas are going to be in the heel. Less than ideal areas are going to be right by the toes. For shoulder season action, like 99% of the, the trails are still going to be dry, but there might be like, like that 100 feet that's like hard pack snow. And that's where I want that little insurance. So for me, I just want to put a couple of screws like in the heel, um, just so if I need to like kind of walk kind of like a duck on the 100 feet to get through, I'm fine. Load up whatever you got. For me, it's this uh, cheapo ratcheting screwdriver. And pick an area you want on your shoe. I'm gonna say one of the lugs that sticks out. I'm gonna do the heel and just pop it in. For me, I'm just gonna use one of the lugs. I'm gonna press in pretty tight and then start turning until the actual screw catches. So the rubber really likes to bounce back, which is great. That's what we want the rubber to do, but it also makes it hard to put things into the rubber, which again is kind of its job is to deflect. So push in and start turning, and soon enough, the screw will get purchase. And then, well, there we go. So you don't need a lot of these. And I'm not sure if like the actual pattern is really important, but once it's um once it's bombed out, like stop. And I almost think that the the ratcheting screwdriver is better for this because with the drill you can kind of keep drilling, and you don't ever know when to stop. You know, it could be like 10 rotations of the bit before you're like, I think I'm good. But in this one, I can see exactly when it's all good to go. Like so, maybe three more, just in the heel is all I want. So for the winter. You know, I think the most important thing for me is like making sure I have a good clean toe off. So I'm gonna look at kind of the ball of the foot, this area, and just make sure that uh, I have a few screws in there so I know that my, I have confidence in towing off and then kind of like a smattering. And again, just be careful right in the toe area. It's just probably too thin to put a screw in and be really confident. So that's my, uh, some of my mutant hacks. Seam grip on those uh, problem areas. Replace the laces right away. Get yourself a DIY rock plate insert. And then for added traction in snow and shoulder seasons, put some uh, screws in your shoes. If you have any other questions for me, um, dealing with trail running, mountain running, fast packing, bike packing, uh, do let me know. Um, add a comment or just email me or, or whatever.